People, 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 welcome back to another episode of the Arsenio Buck Show. Bringing to you today an analogy. A staircase analogy. Now, I actually heard this while I was listening to Lisa Nichols. Now, if you guys don't know Lisa Nichols, Lisa Nichols is the unbelievable woman that has changed me in so many different ways. Just by her sitting on the Steve Harvey show, spewing out of her heart the pain and the anguish that she had to go through in South Central L.A. And while she was giving me this analogy and while I was listening to it, I said, oh, my God. I said, this is basically what everyone goes through in life. I mean, think about it this way. Think about being 30 to 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 floors up, right? But you have to start off at the base. Now, a lot of people would say, okay, well, that's probably what it looks like when we come out the womb. That's what happens when reality hits. That's what happens when we go into high school because that's when we have to choose the rite of passage to either go right or to go left. It could be a lot of different things. But you know what? Now that I look at it, we always want to take an elevator up to success, don't we? We want everything to come instantaneously. See, a lot of people out there, especially a lot of people out there in the world, you know, they want a whole bunch of money. You know, be like, hey, I want a lot of money. Well, how much is how, you know, how much is a lot? You have to be more specific. Well, uh, I want this much. Well, how much is this much? I want a million dollars. Okay, what are you giving to the rest of the planet in order for you to obtain that um, that million dollars? Nothing. We always want to elevate her up. We don't want to do things the hard way. And so I want you guys to look at it this way. If we could actually visualize what the human staircase looks like. Everyone in the world, I'm talking seven, clo- near and seven billion, if not have already got to seven billion. The majority of everyone on this planet is at the base because they believe that either someone's going give to give them a piggyback ride up those steps or that maybe someday they'll just get started. Or maybe they think that an elevator is going to be built. That is not the truth. It's not the truth whatsoever. And this is one of the most interesting things about life. When you're able to put yourself in a position whereas you have to be broken down to the, to the cellular level and build yourself all the way back up. So I actually looked at my life and I said, okay, Arsenio, while I'm cleaning and everything, I'm putting everything together. I said, where can I view it? Yeah, like, what can I see? How? Where did this all begin in terms of my life? In terms of this staircase? Well, you know what? When I first came to Thailand... Well, I was at floor number one. Of course, like everyone else, you know, I was just straddling up the stairs. And then things started happening to me. And I mean, I was stuck. Honestly, I think I regressed. I think I went into a basement. Because I feel like I was in such... I couldn't breathe while I was there. Because of so many different things. I had one of the most insane bosses that I was terrified of being around. Honestly, just completely terrified. Because I knew she would come up to me and she would threaten my job saying, you know, with a lot of different things. She wanted so much power. It's just like the first job I had out there in Sydney, Australia. It was a pediatric dental office. This lady was the second most evil person I've ever met in my life. Of course, with that other person who, yeah, a lot of different things. But she and that entire province and everything I had to go through there and me going home and slamming my arms on the bed. And crying like a baby. That was it. That was the beginning of the renewal process. And you know what? When I faced fear and I got the hell out of there, I started going up those steps a little bit. Did I still have a purpose? Hell no, I didn't have a purpose. I don't know what the hell I was doing. Honestly, if I could talk to myself five years ago, I would say, what the hell are you doing? Why are you here? I would probably say at that specific moment, well, anything to be away from my family in America. But now... I know the purpose of my life. But I had to go through the nasty jungles with so many poisonous snakes and poison dart frogs straight out of Brazil, the Amazon, you name it. It was an ugly, and I mean it was an ugly couple of, uh, I guess you could say several months. And so I went to the south of Thailand, and you guys, will probably a lot of you know this story, but I kept continuing and kept grinding and kept telling myself that maybe there is something out there. 
that I'm looking for. Yes, I went up to probably what? I guess you could say floor number five, six, seven, eight. And boom, it got even worse. Whatever it was that was in my mind back then, I brought with me out there. First week, it was unbelievable. People were super friendly. People would say hello to me. And then within five months, towards the end, everywhere I went, I got some of the most dirty looks imaginable. People hated my guts because of the color of my skin. Could you imagine that? And so I kept going. And I said, you know what? I'm going to try to continue on. I'm going to keep on. I just got to get the hell out of here. And I tried giving myself some false hope in terms of actually staying. Telling myself, no, you know what? I should just stay here because I'm comfortable. I already have this. I already have that. I could just stick out another year. I'm probably not going to be able to make a lot of money out there in Bangkok either. But that was bullshit. And then, of course, the argument came. And she's like, no, you're going to have to tell the teachers why you went. A lot of different things. I said, you know what? I don't need you. I'm done. Bye. We're finished. And I walked back to the computer room. And that's when everything hit me so quickly. And I remember I was writing, uh, what is it? I, of course, I regressed in this staircase of life. And I remember riding my bike, my moped, with just one arm with a hand on my chin in the middle of the road, which is very, very dangerous to do out here in Thailand because people will unwittingly hit you. And I was finished. I was beyond broken. I was so broken to the point where did I have second thoughts of just going head on with another car? No, I didn't have the guts to do that. But if I got hit and flew off my bike at that specific moment, I would have been comfortable with that moment. That's how emotionally destroyed I was because of the opinions and what I created my reality as. I applied for 60 jobs probably with a week before that. And only three of them responded and they said they wanted a picture. And of course, when they saw the picture, they completely disappeared because it was a picture of a black man. And so it continued. You know, finally I got through and I said, okay, well, I got this job. That's probably about an hour north of Bangkok. I can do this. Got another part-time job on weekends. I said, I can do this. But then at that place, I saw it. Even it, it was a more, it was it was much much worse. Now, of course, I went up them stairwells, and now I was carrying sandbags with me, and I was all the way leading up to the job I've had for three and a half years that I just quit just last month. Well, I guess you could say this month officially the visa ended and everything, but that baggage that I took up with me in 2014, leading to the darkest month of my life, October of 2014, I was still. Bring it to me all the nasty things. I remember walking into a language center somewhere just outside of Bangkok. I can't even remember where it was. But I remember walking in. And, of course, white woman, but everyone's white that works there. And I walked in, and everyone looked at me, including the students. Oh, my God. Those looks are seared in my mind. And you know what? I think when I started working at this part-time place... All the odds were stacked against me already. And it's crazy because three and a half years in, I still have that degree, that sense, that everything in terms of, you know, I had that racial hatred still happen in that specific place, but I brought it with me. So, of course, it was still with me all the way leading up through those years and going through the racist company, you know, Swarovski and going through Toshiba, which is another one that just completely got rid of me. All of these things that just happened. I brought with me since 2014 because that's when it began when I actually moved here to Bangkok from the south of Thailand in 2014. I was still under the impression, and I mean, I went through absolute sheer hell at that time because so many people wanted to see me fail. And so, of course, going into this last job, and I ended up working there for three and a half years. There were times, there were instances, you know, there were some good there were some good moments, there were some okay moments, and then there was hell. And then there was more hell in 2015. But then in 2016, that's when I started teaching myself the personal development. I believe I went up 50 floors that year because that's when I let all those shackles go. I let all those sandbags, I just took everything, all the weight off of me. And so finally, leading up to this last part and this last story. In terms of what has happened this year and what's probably going to happen very soon. Honestly, if you guys ask me right now, okay, Arsenio, so what's the purpose? Well, the purpose is to build an online empire because my podcast 
is going unbelievably insane. And it's because I created it. And you know what? Reaching out to people all around this planet, this is what I've always wanted to do. And so, breaking it all down in retrospect, ah, it is remarkable how I said, you know what? I know this go- there isn't an elevator here in this country. I'm going to go up these steps. And when I'm going up these steps, there are going to be pitfalls. There's going to be hell. There's going to be a lot of problems. There's going to be things that I have no control over. But the thing is, is that I need to keep moving. I cannot become stagnant. I cannot just stop learning. I can't do anything like this. In terms of, hey, you got to keep learning. And so, here it was. Of course, I asked myself last November, last December. I've gone down these roads, but I love talking about my life because it could relate to you guys. And I said, okay, well, you know what? This is it. This is the last draw. Is this what's going to ultimately end up unfolding in my life? Am I just going to quit because this happened or because that happened? No. I said, right now, I'm going to quit this job because it's the best thing that could ever happen to me. Why? Because all that weight that I've carried from 2013 into 2014 loopholed into this job. But everything I have right now, it's no more. So everything that I'm connected with right now on this particular day and having these jobs from different countries saying, hey, send your resume, do this, do that. I'm going to keep on doing it. But the thing is, I'm no longer carrying the baggage from the past on my shoulders. So it's now easier to go up those steps. Boy, it's been, you know, being able to harness that amount of courage and going just, this is just everyday things. You you know, everyone has been through this, right? In one way or another, it could be your job, it could be your wife, it could be your husband, it could be your neighborhood, it could be what you've been through in terms of your neighborhood back in the countries you live in. (sighs) We've all been there. This is nothing unusual, okay? This isn't. Uh, this isn't like the brutal chimpanzee gang in, uh, what is that? That, that place out there in Africa, whereas they're just like tearing apart communities. No, it's nothing crazy unusual. My life isn't on the line. But the thing is, when it comes to PMA and NMA, which I've been talking about so much, no family, essentially no family. My sisters, no messages. My mother, Nothing. She probably likes a couple of Facebook posts every three to four months. That's not communication. She hasn't dared try saying, hey, I would love to see you on video. None of that. Brother, I unwittingly booted him out of my life uh, just two years ago. Because you know what? He's the angry being that he's always been since the very, very dawn of, what is it, the 1990s. And so it was time for me to tell my sisters... At that specific moment back in 2016, the last time I talked to him, I will never speak to your older brother again because he resembles what your father is. A complete fuck up. And the only way he's going to be able to take control of his life is to take control of his addictions. The alcoholism, the this, the that. This is what I've come from. So when it comes down to, hey, Arsenio, will you go back to see your family? I got my grandma. I've got my aunt, but other than that, there's nothing. It's funny, a lot of people would say, okay, so if you go back to America, who are you going to see? I said, I ain't got no friends out there. I might, I got a couple of people that, you know, come and go when they, you know, I got a childhood friend named Billy, uh, a, a dental hygiene friend I talk to maybe three times a year, maybe not even that, probably twice a year. That's in Vegas, got no, no, no term, that, <sighs> best friend, gone. Okay, that was in Arizona. I got nothing. It's Arsenio. If Arsenio doesn't hustle and Arsenio doesn't grind and Arsenio doesn't pull himself together in terms of bringing this out and being able to accomplish, not even accomplish this, but being able to make ends meet and make money, Arsenio's got no help. If everything falls flat here in Thailand, There's nothing else left. So 
this is what has ultimately ended up transpiring. And I think that's what this stairwell's all about. It's about having your back against the wall every day you wake up, but knowing that you're in full control because you're in the driver's seat of your life. Now, if I ultimately end up failing on all terms and saying, oh, well, Thailand, this happened and that happened. I'm going to go to Vietnam. Oh, I can't find nothing in Vietnam. Oh, I'm going to have to go back to America. I don't know what I should do. What should I do? No, I'm 30 years old now. It's up to Arsenio now. There's no going back to mommy saying, mom, can you let me in? I would like to. Mm -mm. There's nothing like that left. It is Arsenio. And it's only Arsenio. And this is probably the most beautiful part about my entire life. And everything that has been happening in the last four years is because when everything arrives, as I see it transpiring before my life right now and everything happening the way it is, I'm going to be able to look back on this time and say, wow, if I failed at any given moment those last five years, where would I have been? I mean, I would have to go to the United States Embassy and try to get uh, uh, literally a charity ticket back to a place that doesn't even exist and be a homeless individual, literally. This is basically what I'm up against right now. Now, yes, I know about the habit of saving. I know about this. I know about that. I'm completely fine. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. Yes, that's all good. But at the same time, I'm maintaining that PMA and saying to myself, you know what? I'm going to be able to get through this. And when I get through this and I create this and all this starts to happen, you know, happening, I'm going to be like, you know what? I lived life on such an edge that if I failed and stumbled at any given moment, that could have been the end of me. That's the staircase. Knowing that if you fall back and you hit your head and you lay there unconscious for a long time, no one's going to be there to pick you up and save you. If something happens here in Thailand, no one gives a shit about me in Thailand. Thailand is a predominantly Buddhist country. They are literally engraved and born with the sense that everything is going to be taken from them no matter what. So that's why they laugh at death. I don't have friends out here in Thailand that would say, oh my God, Arsenio died. They would say, ah, ha ha, Arsenio died. Ah, ha ha. You see? My mom wouldn't even know what happened. My best friend probably wouldn't know for about months. Mm -mm. And this is probably what living life on the edge is. Pushing yourself to the psychological, emotional, physical, all types of limits to succeed. Knowing that you, there is no rescue 911. There is Arsenio 911. If something happens, I don't have someone to call and say, oh my God, could you please help me? I don't. It's up to Arsenio now. And this is probably what makes it so exciting. This is probably why my TEDx and this is going to happen. And next thing you know, when I, uh, I don't know, have a radio show or have this and have that, people are going to be like, oh my God. And all those people from the past, I'm going to be like, guys. There was, no mom, there was no mom that was going to save me. There was no this. There was no that. There was none of that. It was up to Arsenio. And you know what? Arsenio achieved everything. So from this point going forward, I cannot allow you back into my life on that level. I respect you. You've done everything for me. But you know what? Arsenio had to go through the dark. Three and a half years at this place. Horrendous. Got racially slurred at this, that. The looks, the denials of jobs, the this, everything you can imagine. But if Arsenio stumbled one time and Arsenio ended up losing all his money for whatever reason, he's finished. And this is the gamble I take every day, knowing that it is up to me. There is no one out there that's going to help me. You guys need to really um, just look at it this way. Success is exactly like this. There are no elevators. There's no one that's going to grab your hand. And of course, yeah, a lot of you might say, I live with my family. I have this. I have that. Yes, I absolutely. And that is a wonderful thing to have. And I'm so grateful that you actually have that. But at the same time, I don't have anything to fall back on. If I fall back, there are possibly nails. There are possibly pitfalls. There are so many different things. No one is going to help me out of that goddamn ravine. 
It's only up to Arsenio. And this is probably why I'm such a success today. What a beautiful analogy, isn't it? So I want you to look at your life. Look at your life and see, have you been sitting down on floor number five for five years? And when are you going to start going back up? And with that being said, guys, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, and evening. This is your host, Arsenio, as usual, over and out.